These are all my rarest Jurassic World figures, and today we're checking them out. First up, we've got this huge Indominus Rex hybrid figure. While most Indominus Rex figures are painted just gray, this one has some crazy red, some gold on the underbelly and arms and legs, and it has a few unique action buttons too. The first is a chomping action. And second is a button that reveals even more spikes on its back. Next up, we've got another Indominus Rex figure. This one is normal colored, but it's pretty old. It's got a rubberized head and neck, and the rest of its body is a hard plastic. And when you pull down on the arms, it opens and closes its mouth. This next rare figure is a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It also has some rubberized parts of its body as well, like the tail and the neck. This figure also has some stomp sound effects. And of course, it's got a roar sound effect and a chomp action. In the back here, we've got another T-Rex figure. This one looks quite a bit different. It's got some green and some very unique and kind of strange looking details on its body. It's a bit smaller than the T-Rex that we just saw, but it has one real cool special effect. Press the button here and it springs up some spikes on its back and on the top of its head too. This next T-Rex right here is actually identical to the other one, except that it does not have the spikes coming out of its back. And I believe this one was actually custom colored too, so you won't find this one anywhere else. This is a super brightly colored dinosaur. This is a classic Dilophosaurus. It's got bright neon coloring all over its body. It's got a button on its side for lighting up and sound effects, although it doesn't work anymore. And you can use the tail to move the head up and down too. Here's a super brightly colored Velociraptor figure. It's got the green with the red stripes all over its body. This one also has a button for sound effects and lighting up, although it doesn't work anymore. And not only that, but it also has a tail that you can press down on to open and close its mouth. Here's a pretty unique looking dinosaur. This is an Amargosaurus. It stands on all four legs and it has two action buttons. One moves its head up and down and the other swings its tail. Check out those two huge spines running down its back and its neck. Next up, we've got an Edmontosaurus figure. This one's a bit more recent, but it can be pretty hard to find. The brightest coloring is on the top of its head. It's got some blue and some yellow, and you can hear the sound effects, and there's a tail that moves its head around too. Check it out, we've got another Indominus Rex figure. This one's quite a bit smaller than the ones that we saw earlier, although it's got some really cool battle damage that you can slide open and close. Plus, on this figure, you can move the tail up and down, and it has a chomping action. Here's another super brightly colored dinosaur. This is a hybrid Stegosaurus and Triceratops. Check out all that super cool gold coloring all over its body, and it's even got some battle damage right on the side. And this figure has one action. When you press down on the tail, it pushes its head forward. Here is a winged dinosaur. I'm not sure what type it is. It's definitely not a pteranodon or anything like that. It's got a bright blue underbelly. It's got the red on the top. It's got an action button right on its back. And you can flap the wings by moving the back feet. Up next is a miniature Mosasaurus figure. This small figure has some battle damage that you can open and close right on the side. And although it doesn't work anymore, you used to be able to lift the tail up to open and close the mouth. Here is the Concavenator figure. This dinosaur has some bright coloring along its back right next to the spike and some purple all over its face. Plus it has two action buttons, one to activate the jaw and the other to activate the tail. Right here is a special edition Ankylosaurus figure. This figure is pretty special because you can actually remove part of the shell on top of its body as well as on its tail. And underneath you can see that there's still a super hard shell for this dinosaur. And with this figure, when you move this leg back and forth, it swings its tail and it moves its head back and forth. Aww. Right here we've got a classic looking Ceratosaurus figure with a button for battle damage on the side. This figure is a bit smaller than many of my other Ceratosaurus figures, but you can still use the tail to open and close them out. <laughs> Up next, we've got a reflective Parasaurolophus figure. Check out that super shiny pink coloring along its back and some on its leg as well. And this figure has an action where you can move the tail to move the head around. Plus, it has sound effects too. 
I've got another Velociraptor figure here. This one isn't as bright as the last one we saw, but it's still got the battle damage button right on the side that used to light up and have sound effects. Plus on this figure, you can move the tail up and down to move the arms. I've got one more Dilophosaurus figure in this super rare collection. This one is identical to the one we saw earlier, except that it does not have the super bright neon coloring. It's got the huge frills in the front, there's the battle damage button on the side, and you can use the tail to dip the head up and down too. This next dinosaur I believe is called Apachycephalosaurus. It's yellow with black striping along the top. It's got a tiny bit of battle damage on the side and it's got an action that when you press down on the tail, it does a headbutting action for its super hard shell on its head. Next up, we've got a super small Spinosaurus figure with super bright coloring. It's blue on the side, it's like a reflective gold on the underbelly and bright red along the spine. It's also got the battle damage on the side and you can use this figure's tail to move its head around. Next up is a small Allosaurus figure. Once again, really brightly colored. It's got tan, yellow, and red on its body. It's got a little bit of battle damage on its side, just like the other figures, and the tail that controls the mouth and the head. And finally, we've got three Tyrannosaurus Rex figures. This middle one is for sure the rarest one. It is a super bright orange color. It's got some gold coloring along the top. And this T-Rex is actually a hybrid with a Dilophosaurus. You can tell because of those huge frills on the front right there. And these other two are a little bit more normal looking. They've both got the battle damage right on the side. This first one is a light green color, and this one is a light brown color. And they both have the tail that controls the mouth when you move it around. First one is the Endoraptor. So this Endoraptor figure is probably medium size, not as big as most of the T-Rex figures. It's got the all black body with the gold striping right along the side, just like the movies. And this figure is super poseable. You can move basically every joint in its body as you could in real life. You can open the jaw, the neck, the arms, the legs, the tail. It's got two joints. It's got some quills on its back and on the top of its head too. And of course, it's got those red eyes. Next up, we've got the Dino DNA Lab Kit with the Dimorphodon. Let's open it up and check it out. All right, here we go. So here is the Dimorphodon. It's gray in color, and then it's got that maroon purplish coloring on the bottom of its wings, and it's pretty adjustable. And we've got the Dino DNA kit. Comes with the slime, too. Let's go ahead and put this in. All right, here's the slime, and it goes into the canister. Oops, didn't quite fit. And then you stick this dinosaur skull into the slime. And there you go. It is now on display. Plus, you can actually open up the canister to let the goo slide out of the side. That's pretty cool. And next up, we've got another Dino DNA Lab Kit. This is the Velociraptor Pack, so let's open it up and check it out. Here is the Velociraptor. It looks like it is in a sneaking pose, crawling along the ground. It's got a light green color, and it's pretty poseable with all its limbs and jaw. And of course, you've got the DNA kit right here. Let's put that slime in. And finally, let's put the skull in. Looks like this kit comes with the same skull. And there we go. Exact same as the other one. It's got the opening on the side to let out the goo. And you can close it back up and put it on display. Next up. We've got the Legacy Collection Extreme Chomping Spinosaurus. This has the dark green body and the iconic red along the spine and the face too. And of course, it's got that chomping action. This is the Thrash and Throw T-Rex. This dinosaur can be controlled by moving its tail all around to control its neck, its head, and its jaw. Right over here, we've got the giant Mosasaurus figure. They've actually come out with a new one since then that has different coloring, but this is the original one for Fallen Kingdom. This one has a lighter blue coloring on the side and the top compared to the newer one and the white underbelly. And on this figure, the tail actually doesn't move. That's only with the newer Mosasaurus figures. 
Here we've got the basic figure of the Endoraptor. It has the same awesome coloring as the one we opened up earlier, but the limbs cannot move around as much. As you can see, you can only move them somewhat. You can't move the elbows, you can't move the knees. It's kind of stuck in this crawling, sneaking pose. <laughs> This is the Action Attack Suchomimus. It's got a bright blue color on the bottom and the sides and the yellow detailing on the top. And it's got one action button on its back for chomping. Next up is the Roarivore Allosaurus. It's got the gray body with yellow detailing on top and you can move the arms and the legs and there's an action button on its back for chomping the jaw. This is the Roarivore Ceratosaurus. It has a light yellow body with the black and red detailing on the top and the iconic horn right there on its nose. Plus it's got an action button on its back to chomp the jaw. Right here, we've got a basic figure of the Dilophosaurus. It's got the soft green body with the red frills and you can open and close the frills and move the limbs a little bit, but they're not very adjustable. This is another basic figure from Jurassic World. This is a Velociraptor with the orange body and the brown top. And just like the Dilophosaurus, the limbs are slightly adjustable, but it's pretty basic. Way down here, we've got an extreme chopping T-Rex. This is part of the Legacy Collection, I believe. And it has the orange body with the light underbelly. It's got the button on the top of its head for chomping. Here's one that I actually haven't shown that much. This is the Tyrannosaurus Rex Anatomy Kit. As you can see, you can take it all apart and check out its insides. See, it's got, I think that might be the stomach, that's the intestines, you can see the muscle of the tail, you can see the bone behind it, and even on its leg that you can take off, you can take this apart and see what's inside. So there you've got the bone, you've got more muscle. It's pretty cool. This is the Action Attack Carnotaurus. It's got the dark red body, lighter underbelly, and it's almost like a purple color along the top with all of those bumps along its spine. And this dinosaur has a jaw snapping action. It's really fast. This dinosaur is the Action Attack Stegosaurus. It has a light blue body with a darker blue along the top, and this figure has a tail swinging action. Next up, we've got the Roarivore Cynoceratops. This dinosaur has some pretty cool patterning along its whole body. I really like that orange right on the top. And this figure has a head shaking action for roaring. This is a pretty big winged dinosaur. This is the Roarivore Pteranodon. This figure has a dark blue body with the red and white wings. And it's got a button on its back for the wing flapping. This is the Legacy Collection Velociraptor with the jumping action. The legs are spring-loaded, so when you press down on its body, it'll actually spring up into the air. And this is a super bright Velociraptor. I love the bright orange on this figure. Next up is the Battle Damage Triceratops. This is a smaller figure. It's green all over its body. It's got a little bit of light brown on the top. And most importantly, it's got the Battle Damage on the side that you can flip open and closed. Looks like we got a few more pteranodons in here. First one is a light gray color. It's got some dark blue detailing on the wings and on the face, and it's got a button on its back to flap its wings. And this second pteranodon is a dark green color with yellow accenting. And just like the other, it has a button on its back for flapping the wings. Here is another basic figure. This is Velociraptor Blue. This figure is about medium size and it's fairly adjustable, but since it's a basic figure, you only can do so much with the arms and the legs. Over here, we've got the Roarivore Baryonyx. This has a light brown body with a dark blue gray coloring on top. And the coolest part is this reflective blue right along the top of its head. Plus this figure has an action button on its back for chomping and roaring. 
Here is another Baryonyx figure, but this one I believe was actually part of a Lava Surge playset. This one has the bright orange coloring on the top of its nose, while the rest of its body is light brown and dark blue gray, just like the other one. And of course, it's got the action button on its back for chomping and roaring. <laughs> Here is the Roarivore Metriacanthosaurus. This has a green yellow coloring along the side and bottom with a darker green along the top and it's got a button on its back for chomping. Right over here is the Roarivore Triceratops. This has a clay red color with the brown detailing along the top and it's got a button on its back for the roaring. This figure is the Roarivor Ankylosaurus. It has the dark brown underbelly. It's got some green detailing along its shell and the gray and the white spikes too. And this figure has the button for swinging its tail back and forth. Let's see how many battle damage figures we have in here. I think I found four, I think that's about it. Let's check them out. This first one is Apache Cephalosaurus, the green body and the orange top, and of course the battle damage right there on the side. Next up, we've got a yellow Velociraptor with brown detailing along the top and the battle damage right on the side that you can open and close. As well as another Velociraptor, looks like Velociraptor blue with the battle damage on the side. And finally, a green Herrerasaurus with the battle damage on the side and a little bit of orange brown detailing along the top. We've got tons of Velociraptors in here. Let's check these out. This first one is a blue and gold Velociraptor, and on its head is actually pretty reflective, which is awesome. Then up next, we've got the classic Velociraptor blue figure, and of course you can open and close its jaw and move many of its limbs around. <laughs> then we've got this red Velociraptor and this green Velociraptor. Both have movable limbs and you can open and close both of their jaws too. Here we've got a few Dilophosauruses. This first one is light green with the yellow and red frills in the front. It's got some brown coloring on its back. And this second Dilophosaurus is a dark brown color with blue detailing on the back and its frills are white and like a dark green color. Next up, we've got the green Minmi figure. This figure has spikes all over the top of its shell for protective covering. And it looks like we've got a couple more Dimorphodons in here too. This one has the gray and maroon coloring just like the one we saw earlier at the beginning of the video. And this figure is dark green and has orange and red coloring along its wings. That's pretty cool. I definitely like this coloring better. This, I believe, is a Protoceratops. It's got the light blue coloring with the yellow detailing along the top. Here is another jumpin' Velociraptor figure. This one is a bright blue coloring. And just like the other Velociraptor figure, you can press down on its body to bend the legs, and then you let go to let it spring up into the air. Next up is the Stiggy Milok Stiggy. This figure has the super hard head with the spikes right behind it, and you can move its arms and its legs and its tail too. We've also got a few Gallimimuses in here. This first one is a blue-gray color with darker coloring along the top, and it has adjustable legs, arms, and a neck. This second figure is a bit different. Its coloring is a bit more detailed all over its body, plus it's got an action button on its back to run its legs. And the final one is a light tan Gallimimus with darker brown detailing along the top, and just like the others, you can move the legs, the arms, and the neck. This is the Legacy Collection Pachycephalosaurus, and this figure has the head ramming action. And last but not least is the Proceratosaurus. It's a smaller figure with a dark brown coloring with a lighter underbelly, and it's got that red detailing right along its nose, and you can open and close its jaw and move its arms and legs. Next up of the brand new dinosaurs is the Zungaripteris. This is a flying dinosaur, so let's open it up and check it out. 
So this flying dinosaur is pretty brightly colored. It's got yellow wings and a yellow body, and then it's got the brown on the very top and on the neck and on the head. You can see there's a bit more bright coloring right on its horn and right along its eyes and nose as well. Let's see if you can open up the mouth. Yep. You can adjust the wings and you can move the neck around as well. And the DNA barcode is right there. Next up is the Moros Intrepidus. Let's check it out. This dinosaur is from the Jurassic World Ferocious Pack and it's pretty adjustable. You can see it's got a soft green color throughout most of its body. It's got some white and then the orange tail at the back. Let's see if we can open up the mouth. Oh, it's really difficult, but you can. And its joints are pretty articulated as well. You can move the arms, the neck, you can move the legs and the tail too. Here we've got the Rowdy Roars Atrociraptor. Let's check it out. All right, here is the Atrociraptor. Just put batteries in it, so let's see what it can do. You can see that there's a button up top here and a power switch. Let's turn on the power and let's press the button and see what happens. Oh, that's interesting. So the, so the body does move. It does like this little wiggling thing. If I put it down on the table, I bet it would walk. That's pretty interesting. I do love the coloring on this as well. It is a bright orange color over most of its body. It's got the brown on the top and a little bit of yellow detailing on the legs. It's pretty cool. And last of the brand new dinosaurs is Velociraptor Charlie from the Camp Cretaceous set. All right, another Velociraptor to add to my huge Velociraptor collection. And it's got an action button right here on the top for some slashing. Let's check that out. Looks like it doesn't work too well. Yeah, the slashing action seems like it kind of gets stuck a bit. But still, this is a pretty cool Velociraptor. It's pretty articulate with all its joints. I think this will look great with all my other Velociraptors. All right, let's dig into this giant bin of old Jurassic Park and Jurassic World figures. This is the 1993 Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's got a soft body all over. Its legs are made of hard plastic as well as its arms are hard plastic that swivel. And this T-Rex has a chomping action. When you squeeze the soft stomach, its mouth opens and closes. It's a little old, so it's not working quite as well as it used to. But this is pretty cool. This is a huge T-Rex. Here we've got another vintage Jurassic Park Tyrannosaurus Rex. This T-Rex also has a soft body except for its legs is a hard plastic, as well as its arms again, that you can swivel back and forth. And with this T-Rex, instead of squeezing the stomach, you can move the tail and it moves its head around. That's pretty cool. This is a super old dinosaur figure. This is the Stomp and Strike T-Rex. This is one of the older Jurassic World figures. And how it works is set it up like that. So it's in the roar position. And then you activate the tail and it comes swinging down for a chomp. That is pretty cool. Here we've got a super special and pretty hard to find Jurassic World Hybrid Indominus Rex. Let's check out the features of this dinosaur. First, with the arm, you pull that, then it has a chomping action. Second, there's a hidden button right here that when you press, it shoots out its spikes. I'm super glad I have this Indominus Rex, and I love the gold on the underbelly too. That is something you don't see very often. Here is another vintage Jurassic Park dinosaur. This is the Utah Raptor. See, it's got the JP-22 right there on its legs. It's got some huge claws on its feet that are adjustable, and you can move the legs and the arms. And with this Utah Raptor, you can actually pull the legs back to lock into place. And then there's a hidden button underneath its tail that you press to swing them forward. So it's like a chomping action when it's standing up. Here is a vintage Jurassic Park Allosaurus. This dinosaur has a hard plastic body all around. And you can see that some body parts actually come off to reveal battle damage underneath. 
Look how detailed that is too. You can see like intestines in there. You can see some bone on the part that you take out. And there's even other parts that you can take out too. You can take out part of its leg, see its bone and its muscle right there. And you can even take out part of its tail too. Let's check out that bone underneath. And it just clicks right back into place. Here is another hybrid dinosaur. This is from the old Jurassic World toy line. This is a hybrid Tyrannosaurus Rex. You can see those spines right on the top there. You can actually hide them and the ones right next to its head. And then when you press this button right here, they'll all slide out. That's pretty cool. Plus that button doubles as a chomping button. This has some pretty unique coloring on it too. This one back here is a Jurassic Park vintage toy. I believe this is a baby T-Rex, if I remember correctly. You can see it has some battle damage right there on the side. And like many of the other vintage figures that I have, its body is soft aside from its hands and its feet. And it's got a mostly brown body with a darker brown spots and stripes as well. Back here, we've got a special edition Ankylosaurus. This one's pretty special because it actually has this additional shell that you can remove to reveal the normal shell. And look, it's even got some battle damage right there on the side. So this is pretty cool. And you just click it right back on. And this Ankylosaurus has an action as well. When you move this leg back and forth, you can see that it sticks its head out and it swings its tail too. Here's another Jurassic World T-Rex. You won't see the JW tattoo on its leg because this one was colored differently. So this one is a red color with black spots and stripes all over. And it's got the chomping action button on its back too. This is pretty cool. Right over here, we've got another vintage Jurassic World figure made by Kenner. This is the Chasmosaurus. It's got that huge shield in the front. It's got the three horns on its head. Plus, with this figure, when you move the leg, it moves its head up and down for a roaring action. This is a Ceratosaurus with battle damage. It's got the red on the top with the black stripes and the rest of its body is a light tan color. And it's pretty articulate with the arms and the legs. Plus, with the tail, when you move that up and down, it opens and closes its mouth. Here we've got an even smaller T-Rex. This is also from the old Jurassic World toy line. It's got the battle damage on the side, arms and legs can move, and with the tail, you can control the head. You can go up and down, back and forth, and you can open and close the mouth all in one. Right over here is a big winged dinosaur. I believe this is a Pteranodon. You can fold in the wings, make it easier for storage. And it's got two buttons on its back. One flaps the wings and one opens and closes the mouth. Here we've got a bunch of classic Jurassic World Velociraptors. I have a ton of these. See that these two are tan with the green striping on top. This one is a dark green with the black striping on top. And with each of them, you can move the arms and the legs. Can't open the mouth or close them or anything like that. But these are actually some of my biggest velociraptors, which is pretty cool. This is the Ankyloranodon, and it's a pretty weird looking dinosaur. It's got a light color over most of its body and the bright red striping right on the top all the way to the tail. See, it's got some spikes or feathers or something like that on the top of its head, on its back, and on its arms, like wings as well, as well as right on the tip of its tail. And with this figure, you can move its leg up and down for a roaring or chomping action. Here we've got a basic Jurassic World Spinosaurus. You can't open and close the mouth or adjust the neck on this one. And it is smaller than a lot of the other Spinosaurus figures that I have, but it's still got the same iconic coloring as my other Spinosauruses with the red on the top, the white in the middle, and the green on the bottom, as well as the red right around its eyes. Next up, from Jurassic World, we've got a Dilophosaurus that is super brightly colored with orange and green and yellow. This is a super colorful dinosaur. Plus, with this figure, it comes with an action. When you move the tail up and down, it swings its head up and down. 
Over here from Jurassic World again is a Ceratosaurus with pretty unique coloring. It's got brown over its whole body and then a light orange detailing on its back all the way to its horn. And the action button on its back activates its roar and its jaw. Next up from the Jurassic World toy line, JP63, we've got a classic Baryonyx. This dinosaur is super thin looking and with its right foot, you can move it back and forth to twist its neck back and forth too. Here is another hybrid dinosaur from Jurassic World. This looks to be like a Triceratops and Stegosaurus hybrid. Plus it's got the battle damage right there on the side. This dinosaur is super bright with a light blue on most of its body and dark blue detailing on its feet and in the front too. And this dinosaur has an action. When you move the tail, it swings its head forward for a stabbing action. This one is a similar hybrid as the one we just saw, but with different coloring. You can see it's a dark green with some tan detailing on its body with the same battle damage. I believe this is also a Stegosaurus and Triceratops hybrid with the same stabbing action too. This classic Jurassic Park figure, I believe is called an Amargo Spinus. It's got some bright red accenting on the top of its body. It's got some horns right there on its neck and the rest of its body is black and tan. Let's check out the actions on this dinosaur. You can see when you move this leg, it activates those spines to go up. It also moves those spines on its neck and it opens and closes its mouth for a roar too. So it's doing three things at once. I see a few more Jurassic World Velociraptors. Let's see, we've got the dark green with black striping. We've got a brown with gray striping. We've got a special one over here that is a bright green with red striping. And this one actually has a few actions on it. It's got a battle damage button right on its side and the tail activates the mouth too. I think there's one more back here. Yep, here is another Velociraptor. Also with the battle damage on its side and the tail chomping action. This figure is another vintage Jurassic Park figure made by Kenner. This is Apache Cephalosaurus. You can see it's still got the restraint around its waist, but when you take that off, you can see that there's actually some battle damage revealed underneath, which is pretty cool. And as you're probably guessing, since it's Apache Cephalosaurus, the action button that you press right here is for the headbutting, but this figure is so old that it'll actually fly off. As you can see, it's kind of broken, but that's still a pretty cool action for Apache Cephalosaurus. Over here, we've got some small Jurassic World Indominus Rex figures. This one's the smallest, so let's check this one out first. You can see that there's some battle damage on the side, and just like those smaller T-Rexes we saw earlier, you can use the tail to control the face to open and close the mouth, to move the neck around and all that. This slightly larger Indominus Rex has battle damage as well, but you can open and close this one actually. Um. And then you can just pop it right open. Plus you can use the tail for the chomping action too. Here's a big dinosaur. This is from the Jurassic World Legacy Collection. This is the Extreme Chompin' Spinosaurus. It's got the green body with the red and white stripe. And of course, you can move the neck around and activate the chomping with the button on the top of its head. Here's an even smaller Spinosaurus, but this one looks a lot different. This is an older Spinosaurus figure from Jurassic World. See that it's blue along most of its body. It's got some gold coloring on its belly and then the bright red spine. And like the small Indominus Rex and small T-Rexes that we saw earlier, you can use the tail to move the neck and open and close the jaw. We've got another big T-Rex. This is from Jurassic World. It's tan in color all over its body and it's got the button on the top of its back that activates the jaw. Here is another vintage Jurassic Park Baryonyx. This is another super slim dinosaur again. You can see it's got the orange striping on the top. And like the other Baryonyx from Jurassic Park, when you move this leg, 
it twists its head around. Here we've got a super weird looking dinosaur from Jurassic Parks. This is a Lycanops. Kind of looks like a saber toothed tiger in a way. It's got those huge fangs in its mouth and the mouth is spring loaded so you can open and close it. This is from Jurassic World and I believe this is the Proceratosaurus. You can see most of its body is a light tan color with some gray detailing on its back all the way up to its face and it's got the bright red right on top of its face too. Here is another patchy cephalosaurus, but this one is from the old Jurassic World line. And you can see with the tail that you can move its head up and down and back and forth. This is another Jurassic Park vintage toy, and it is, I believe, a Dilophosaurus. This figure is pretty small and pretty slim, but you can see those iconic frills right at the top of its head. <laughs> Here are a few more Jurassic World figures. This, I believe, is another Pteranodon with wings that you can fold up or extend. It's got the action button on its back for flapping its wings. And with this figure, you have to manually open and close its mouth. There is no button for it. This figure is a Jurassic World Mosasaurus. You can see it's got the battle damage on the side that you can open and close. Plus, with this figure, you can use the front fins to activate the jaw. We've got some more Jurassic Park vintage figures in here. This first, I believe, is a Velociraptor with red on the top and orange on the sides. This other figure I have in my hand is a baby T-Rex. You can see with this baby T-Rex that you can actually move the leg around. You can see that it's broken in a way. It did originally come with a bandage that you used to cover that. But all in all, this is a pretty cool figure. Here is another hybrid Triceratops Stegosaurus from Jurassic World. It's got the battle damage on the side, and just like we saw with the other figures, you can use the tail for a stabbing action. Here are two other similar Jurassic World figures. Both of them have the tail chomping action. You can see this one is a T-Rex with battle damage, and this one is a Spinosaurus with battle damage. Let's check out those chomping actions. And last of all is the classic Velociraptor from Jurassic Park. Let's check it out. It's got the chomping action in the front and you can adjust the arms and the legs too. check out is of course the Tyrannosaurus Rex. How could this dinosaur not be in the next Jurassic World movie? And this specific T-Rex figure is actually from the last movie called Jurassic World Dominion. The next dinosaur that I think will be in Jurassic World 4 is the Spinosaurus. This is actually the Camp Cretaceous figure and it is even a little bit larger than the T-Rex figure. Also, I really hope that they bring back the Indominus Rex. This new dinosaur was made known from the first Jurassic World movie, and this figure is actually the Battle Damage Edition, meaning with this button right here, you can actually hide the battle damage on the side. And there's a button on its tail for the roaring action. Next up for my predictions, I've got the huge Giganotosaurus figure. We saw this dinosaur in the last Jurassic World Dominion movie. And this figure is actually the super colossal Giganotosaurus. So as you can see, it is way larger than any of the other figures that I have. Up next is the mighty Mosasaurus figure. This dinosaur was from the first Jurassic World movie, and I think it is one of the best aquatic dinosaurs that they've shown. So I hope they bring it back. And with this Mosasaurus figure, you can move all the fins around and open and close the jaw. Over here, we've got another T-Rex figure. This is a Battle Edition T-Rex. I think it might be from Camp Cretaceous, and you can see that it's got some battle damage slashes right on its side. Plus, the figure is fully poseable with its arms, legs, tail, neck, and its head, and it has a button to chomp the jaw. Up next for my Jurassic World 4 predictions is the Therizinosaurus. This dinosaur had an epic battle in the Jurassic World Dominion movie, and I wouldn't be surprised if they brought it back again for another fight. This figure has a fully poseable body and an attack button on its tail. 
Over here, we've got the Carnotaurus, one of my favorite carnivores. This figure features posable legs and arms and an attack tail that moves its head and chomps its jaw. This is another T-Rex figure, but this is actually an older figure, I think from the first Jurassic World movie. It has a fully tan body other than a little bit of gray on its face, and it features posable arms, legs, and an attack button on its back for chomping. I think Jurassic World 4 might also have a Pentaceratops. This is one massive dinosaur and it has one of the biggest frills that I've seen. And this figure has two buttons, one for a head ramming action and the other for a torso swinging action. Here's another herbivore figure. This is a Cynoceratops. Jurassic World has a few different versions of this figure. This is in the light gray with some tan and yellow detailing and it features an attack tail that moves its head. My next prediction is another awesome predator. This is an Allosaurus. I believe this figure was released with Camp Cretaceous and it features posable arms, legs, and tail and has a slide lever action on its back for roaring and chomping. Right over here is another Allosaurus figure. I believe this one was released, I think from Fallen Kingdom. And this Allosaurus features a dark gray body with yellow detailing. It has posable arms and legs and a single button on its back for the chomping action. All right, let's dig into these brand new ones that I just bought. This first box has a Scorpio Venator and an Iguanodon. These are part of the Dino Trackers Roaring Battle Pack. Here is the Scorpio Venator. I have one other Scorpio Venator figure, but this is a whole new color scheme. It's got dark brown, some orange, and then the light underbelly. Plus, it has a chomping action. And here is the Iguanodon figure. I have a few other Iguanodon figures that look pretty similar to this, but once again, this has totally different coloring. This one features a mostly tan body with the brown detailing along the top of its body. And of course, you can press down on its body for a roaring action. Next up to open up from my brand new figures is this Hammond Collection Ankylosaurus. Let's attach that tail. All right, this figure is looking quite a bit different from many of my other Ankylosaurus figures. First off, it's a bit larger than many of my other Ankylosauruses, and it has much more natural coloring with the dark green on top and the lighter underbelly. But best of all, like all of the Hammond Collection figures, this figure is super poseable. It looks like its tail has three or four different joints, so you can move it around in a really lifelike way. Of course, you can move the legs around and pose them in all sorts of ways. And coolest of all, you can move its head around and even open and close its mouth. And next up is the Hammond Collection Dilophosaurus. And here it is. So once again, it is very poseable all over its body. And best of all, this figure actually features a removable frill. So you can actually take it off and replace it with this little piece as if the frills are closed. <laughs> Next up over here, I've got the Sound Surge Indominus Rex figure. This figure is a lot smaller than many of my other Irexes. I also think Jurassic World might have a Scorpios Rex in it. This figure is quite large and it features two attack buttons, one for the jaw and one for arm slashing. And of course, what would be a Jurassic World movie without a Stegosaurus in it? This figure features the brown body with some green and tan detailing and it has the attack feature where you can swing its tail. I also hope that Jurassic World 4 has some Baryonyxes in it. This Baryonyx is a bright green color with some brown detailing and of course has a roar action. And I also have this older Baryonyx figure from Fallen Kingdom with the orange highlight on the top of its head. Here's another dinosaur specifically from the older Jurassic World movies. This is an Endoraptor. This is the basic figure so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail. Next up, I've got a Carcharodontosaurus figure. This one is in the light tan yellow coloring with some brown and orange detailing. And it has an attack button on its back for chomping its jaw. 
Here I've got another Dilophosaurus figure. This figure is a lot larger than the Hammond Collection version, and it is the basic version, so you can move its frills back and forth, as well as its arms, its legs, and its tail. Jurassic World 4 has got to have some winged dinosaurs too. This is a Pteranodon, and this figure features the orange coloring along its wings and the brown body. Here's another dinosaur from Jurassic World Dominion that I think might show up again. It's an Atrociraptor, and this figure is the basic edition, so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail. Here's another Ankylosaurus figure. You can see that it's quite a bit smaller than the Hammond collection, and it still has some pretty realistic coloring with the green and the gray and the brown. Plus, there's an action button on this one for swinging the tail. Next up is another Dilophosaurus figure, but this one is battery operated, so let's hear some sounds from it. This figure over here is an old Velociraptor figure from the first Jurassic World movie. It features posable legs and posable arms. Next up, also from the Jurassic World Dominion movie, is this basic Pyroraptor figure. And I really hope they bring this one back for the fourth movie. This Pyroraptor is the basic figure, so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail. Over here, I've got another Indominus Rex figure. This one is older, and I believe it was called the Bite and Thrash Indominus Rex. Check it out, another Ankylosaurus figure. This one features much brighter coloring all over its body and has a slide lever action on its back to swing its tail around. This figure set is from Jurassic World Dominion. It features a Parasaurolophus and Owen with his lasso. Up next is another Pteranodon figure. This one is a whole lot smaller, but it has some pretty cool detailing along its wings and a button on its back for flapping the wings. And of course, one that I'm pretty sure that they'll have in the next movie is Velociraptor Blue. And not only that, but we also saw Velociraptor Beta in the last movie as well. So I think that they'll be bringing these Velociraptors back. I've also got a few more Velociraptor figures in here. This first one has a light green body with a darker detailing along the top and features posable arms, legs, and a mouth. And this second Velociraptor features a dark gray body with yellow detailing and the posable arms, legs, and jaw. My next prediction is a Stigimaloc dinosaur. This figure specifically is pretty small and has a dark body, but some dark purple coloring along its neck and its head, and it features a headbutting action when you press down on the tail. We saw some Apatosaurus figures in the last movie, but I think that they might bring back the Brachiosaurus dinosaurs. This figure is a baby Brachiosaurus and has a light green body with a darker green along the top and has a posable jaw, neck, and legs. Over here is another Parasaurolophus figure. I believe this one is also from Jurassic World Dominion and it features a posable head, arms, and legs. I've predicted a few other horned dinosaurs, but I think Jurassic World will also have Triceratops dinosaurs in it. This figure is a lot smaller than many of the other horned dinosaurs that I have, and it features battle damage that you can open and close on the side. And here is another Atrociraptor figure. This one's a lot smaller than the one that we saw earlier, but it has a darker red coloring with the gray detailing, and it has battle damage that you can open and close on the side. Right over here is a miniature Dilophosaurus figure. It has the brown body with the blue detailing, and it still has the frills on the front that you can open and close. And last of all is a teeny tiny Spinosaurus figure. It still has the giant spine on its back, and it has a chomping action as well. This figure right here is the largest Dominion figure that I have. This is the Dreadnoughtus figure, and it is super long. It's probably three or four feet in length. 
but it still has some really cool features. You can even open and close the mouth and twist the head around too. So let's put this dinosaur on the very far left as the biggest dinosaur. Let's see, what super colossal figure is next? It's a tough call, but I think the Giganotosaurus might be the next largest. This figure is huge, has a classic green coloring, the awesome super sharp spine, and the really cool teeth. These are pretty unique. Let's set this super colossal Giganotosaurus down right next to the Dreadnoughtus figure. These are our two largest figures. Next up has got to be our super colossal T-Rex with the new brown and black coloring. You won't see this on older Jurassic World figurines. This one is super cool. Let's put this right next to our giant Giganotosaurus figure. Next is this awesome Atrociraptor figure. This one is the white with two different tones of brown striping along its back and sides. And unlike the other super colossal figures we've seen so far, the teeth are actually fully inside the mouth compared to the other figures we've seen so far where the teeth are on kind of like the outside of the mouth. All right, there we go. Let's move on to the next biggest, which is this tall Brachiosaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. Let me stand it up. Now this dinosaur is a lot taller than these other dinosaurs right here, but its body is a bit smaller and it's just shorter in size overall. So that's why I'm putting it over here. But it's got some pretty cool detailing, the blue coloring around its head. And next up in size is this giant Apatosaurus figure. Check out the size difference between this one and the Brachiosaurus over here. It's a little bit shorter, it's still standing on all four legs and it has a really long neck but instead of going up super tall like that one, this one kind of sticks out forward this more. All right, now we're moving on to our slightly smaller figurines. We're gonna start with this T-Rex, which has the identical coloring as the super colossal figure right over there. This is a really cool T-Rex. I like the features on this one, and this one has a ginormous head compared to older Jurassic World T-Rexes. Right over here, we've got the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This one has some really cool orange brown coloring. It has a lot more detail than many of the other Jurassic World T-Rexes. It even has marbled eyes. Check out all that texture. And these figures are super poseable too, which is an awesome feature. Next, we've got this thrashing Giganotosaurus figure in the same coloring as the super colossal figure over here. They look pretty similar. This one's quite a bit smaller, although it's still probably around a foot in length from tail to head. So let's set this down right next to the T-Rex figure. All right, what do we go with next here? I think next is this Allosaurus figure. This figure is a little bit smaller than the T-Rexes and the Giganotosaurus figure here, but it is a lot larger than a lot of my other Allosaurus figures. Plus it has a battle damage feature right on its side that you can open and close. Let's get this standing right next to the Giganotosaurus. The next up in size is the Therizinosaurus figurine, which was really cool in the Dominion movie. So we're gonna set this down right next to the Allosaurus figure and check out those huge claws on its hand and the really long neck with the big face at the very top. We've got another herbivore dinosaur next in size here. This is the Stegosaurus with some pretty cool coloring. It's got the brown, some lighter tan, green, and then the clay red at the very top. <laughs> All right, let's set it down next to the Therizinosaurus. Look at those spikes. They're a little bit taller than the Therizinosaurus, although if this was standing up all the way, it would definitely be a lot taller. Here is the Yang Chuanosaurus figure. This, I don't think was in the new Jurassic World Dominion movie, but it came out as part of the toy line. It's got some really cool coloring. It's got an action that lets you move the neck around in a lifelike way. And you know what? I think it is actually a little bit bigger than the Stegosaurus. So let's shift the Stegosaurus over and put this dinosaur right there. Next is a really interesting looking dinosaur. This is the Ampelosaurus. It's got the clay red coloring with the brown top, a super long neck, and it stands on four legs. Let's put this right next to the Stegosaurus figure. Hmm, I can't quite tell which one is the next largest, but I'm gonna go with the Rajasaurus figure in the blue and gray coloring. And it's got that cool little spike right at the top of its head. Now let's set it right next to the Ampelosaurus. Let's see if it stands up. I think its legs are kind of broken, so that'll have to do. 
Here is the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus figure. Once again, it has pretty similar coloring as the Super Colossal figure right here, and this one comes with sound effects as well. It's pretty cool, so let's set this right next to the Rajasaurus figure. The next in size, I think, is this Pyroraptor figurine. This is the basic edition, but it still has the cool fiery red coloring and the black on its tail, on its legs, and a little bit on its head too. Let's set them down right here. <laughs> and very close in size to the Pyroraptor is this basic Atrociraptor figure in the same coloring as the super colossal figure that we have back here. So let's go down all the way to the end and set them on the table. All right, now the figures are getting a little bit smaller. I think next up is the Mega Raptor figure in the bright red and blue and a little bit of tan right along its face. And this figure is cool because it actually has an action when you press down on its back, it has a chomping action. Here is, I believe it's pronounced the Dryptosaurus. And a cool new feature that Mattel is putting on these toys is this little slide. It's like a thing that swings back and forth and it actually swings their head back and forth and opens their mouth too, which is pretty cool. Now let's set it down right next to the Mega Raptor. Next is the Hammond Collection Baryonyx figure. This one comes in the gray, dark blue with the yellow striping. And like all the Hammond Collection figures, is super poseable and really cool. Let's put this down right at the end. Here we've got another Hammond Collection figurine. This is the Parasaurolophus. It's got some pretty bright coloring and of course is super poseable and adjustable as well. <laughs> Next is the bright Ichthyovenator. It looks kind of like a Spinosaurus because it has the big spine on its back and a long and narrow snout, but it has a super bright and much larger tail and is a lot smaller than a Spinosaurus, I think. So let's go ahead and put this down right next to the Parasaurolophus. Here we've got a huge Cynoceratops figurine with some bright yellow coloring around its all black eyes and the yellow coloring right on its tail as well. And like many of these other figures, it has the action that when you press down on its back, it lifts up its head. Let's see, next up in size is this Triceratops figure in the green and brown coloring. Let's put this at the very end. Oh, you know what? It looks like we're out of space at the very end though. So let's create a new row in the front, right up here. We've got another Triceratops figure next, but this one is from the Hammond collection. So compared to this other Triceratops figure right here, you can see that this one has a lot more detailing and differencing in the color, because this one basically has two different colors. This one kind of fades into all sorts of other different colors. And of course, is a lot more poseable as well. Next up is the Iguanodon figurine in the tan and darker brown on top with the striping. Let's set down this Iguanodon right next to the Triceratops. Now we're down to the really small ones. So let's start with this brand new one that I bought. This is the Geniodectes Cirrus Dinosaur. All right, this dinosaur is pretty brightly colored. It's got a dark gray body, but then it has this super bright coloring along its leg, its neck, its face, and the super bright red on top. And this is the Extreme Battle Damage Edition, so you can click it open and closed with that button on the top. All right, let's put this Geniodectes down right next to the Iguanodon. We've got a few more extreme battle damage dinosaurs right here that are the same size. This first one is a Velociraptor and I've also got an Atrociraptor figure. And they both have that button on the top that activates the battle damage on both sides of its body. Let's set these down next in line. I've got a couple more Atrociraptor figures right here. These are the non-battle damage versions. I've got an orange one with the tan striping and then of course the white with brown striping, just like the giant super colossal version. Let's get this first Atrociraptor down and the second one. Here is another Pyroraptor. This is a pretty small figure and this one actually has the extreme battle damage on the side as well. Check that out, it's pretty cool. It's got the same classic red and black coloring along its body. And let's set it down right next to the white Atrociraptor. 
This next figure, I believe, is called the Moros Intrepidus. It's got some pretty unique green and orange coloring. It's got the light green eyes, some pretty cool feathering and detailing all over its body. And let's set it down as the next smallest dinosaur. All right, now we're getting down to the real small dinosaurs. These are both Dimetrodons, and their spines make them look really tall, but actually their bodies are really short. This first brown Dimetrodon is a normal one, doesn't have any special features, so we'll put that next in line. But this other Dimetrodon actually has battle damage on the side, like many of these other small figures, which is pretty cool. So let's set that down right there. And here are our last two dinosaurs. We've got a Miragaya dinosaur with the huge spikes on the side. And we've also got a Therizinosaurus figure, which is really small, but still has the giant claws and the classic coloring. All right, let's set these down. Looks like we have just enough space. figure from right in the center of the bin is the Jurassic World Dominion Giganotosaurus. This is a pretty large figure. It's got the soft green body with the black detailing all over the top. It's got that huge spine on its back as well. And this figure has some features as well. It has a chopping action and it has a torso spinning action. This big figure is the Camp Cretaceous extreme damage T-Rex. This figure has posable arms, legs, tail, and a neck that you can move in all directions. And you can open its mouth for posing. And most importantly, it's got the extreme battle damage on the side that you can turn on and off. This next figure is the Jurassic World Dominion Therizinosaurus. This is a pretty big figure as well. It's got a dark body with the red stripe all the way to the top of its head. And it's got a few action buttons. You can use the tail to control the neck. And there's a button for chomping as well. I've also got some brand new figures from both Camp Cretaceous and Jurassic World Dominion. So let's open these up next. This is the Camp Cretaceous Soundstrike Sinoceratops. It's got the all gray body. So let's open it up and check it out. You can see it's got bumps and texturing all over its body and it's not all the same everywhere. You can even see a little bit of its ribs right there too. Interestingly, it's got all black eyes and it's got some yellow and orange detailing on the top of its head right there. And you can use the tail to control the head. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Massive Action Siamosaurus, or at least I think that's how you say it. Let's open it up. This is a pretty unique looking dinosaur. It looks like it walks on all fours. It has a huge red spine on its back. It's got some interesting coloring along its body. It's mostly black but then it has these white splotches all over. And this figure has a couple actions too. First, you can use the tail to swing the head up and down and all around. And there's a button on its tail as well to control the chomping. Next up is the Jurassic World Dominion Roar Strikers Ragosaurus. This is pretty cool. I actually have one Ragosaurus that we'll see later on in this bin, but this one has entirely different coloring. It is a dark, dark blue color. It's got some lighter coloring along the bottom of its neck and its chin. It's got the iconic spines along the top of its neck. And of course, it has the action for when you press down on its body. It's got some chomping action. This is the Camp Cretaceous Dino Escape 3-pack. It comes with a Tyrannosaurus Rex, Darius, and Velociraptor Blue. So let's open it up and check it out. First up, we've got the giant T-Rex figure. This is the light gray brown T-Rex. It's got the darker brown along the top, and it's got the button on the top of its head for the chomping and roaring. Here we've got the Darius figure with the yellow jacket and blue pants. And it doesn't come with any accessories from, but he does have a necklace. 
And finally, in the three pack is the iconic Velociraptor blue figure. This is pretty similar to some other figures that I already have. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Ampelosaurus. It's got this super long neck with the clay red coloring and the brown top with tons of spikes all over its body. It's also got a few action buttons as well. Here is the Camp Cretaceous Carnotaurus figure. This figure is almost as big as many of the T-Rex figures that you'll see. It's got the dark brown red coloring all over its body and some darker detailing along the top. It's got the iconic battle damage right on its nose. It's got the horns on its head as well. And it has some action features as well. Over here is another Sinoceratops figure from Camp Cretaceous. But as you can see, this one has totally different coloring. It is a soft green color over most of its body, and it's got some tan detailing along the top of its back and some unique coloring right on the top as well. And this figure has yellow eyes instead of those black eyes. And with this figure as well, you can use the tail to control the head. This is one of my favorite Camp Cretaceous figures. This is the T-Rex from Camp Cretaceous. And it's my favorite because it's one of the largest T-Rexes that I have. It has some awesome coloring and it has the tail and button on the tail that you can use to control the neck and the jaw. And I just love how realistic you can make this figure look just by moving the tail around. We've got another Camp Cretaceous figure here. This is the Spinosaurus. It's got the light tan coloring along most of its body. It's got some brighter coloring along the bottom of its neck, but most importantly, it's got the red along the spine and at the top of its head too. Plus it's got those dark orange eyes, which is a pretty cool feature. And this figure is pretty adjustable as well. You can move the arms, the legs, the tail, you can move the neck around. And of course there's a button at the top of its head for chomping and check out all those teeth too. I really like how narrow the Spinosaurus's mouth is. We've got another super large T-Rex figure in here. This is from Jurassic World Dominion. It has much darker coloring with the black on top and the dark brown on bottom with a lighter underbelly. This T-Rex has a much bigger jaw and neck than what you'll see in many of the other Camp Cretaceous T-Rexes. And it comes with some actions as well. You can use the tail to swing the torso back and forth and it has a button to activate the jaw. Look at that, it's even got some room in its mouth that you could probably fit a few miniature dinosaurs in there. Here we've got a few Baryonyx figures from Camp Cretaceous. They're both green and brown in color, but they're not quite the same. This one is a darker green, has two tones of brown along the top. It's got the action button on its back to activate the jaw. This one is a much lighter green. It's almost like a mustard yellow and green color and it has brown on the top and a darker green along the back. And this figure has a slide lever action to activate the jaw and sound effects. This figure is the Yang Chuanosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got a soft green body with the yellow underbelly and the brown detailing along the top. And it's got the orange crown on the top of its head. This figure is pretty adjustable. You can move the arms and the legs. You can use the legs to actually position the neck up and down. And you can use the tail to swing the torso back and forth and a button on its tail to use the jaw. This is a Camp Cretaceous Triceratops. It's got the brown coloring along most of its body, two tones of blue along the top and along the front as well. It's got some sound effects and just like the Sinoceratops, when you move the tail, you can control the head. Next up, we've got the Camp Cretaceous Parasaurolophus figure with yellow coloring along most of its body. It's got some dark purple and then some bright reflective like purple pink coloring along its leg and its back. And it's got the iconic horn at the top of its head too. And with this figure, you can use the tail to control the head just like many of the other Camp Cretaceous figures. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Sound Surge T-Rex. This T-Rex is a lot smaller compared to many of the other T-Rex figures that I have. It's got the same type of coloring, brown along most of its body with gray detailing along its neck. But the most important part about this figure is the sound effects it comes with. And as the final feature, you can open and close the mouth manually. You'll see that the teeth or the tongue is not painted though. 
This Camp Cretaceous figure, I believe, is the Extreme Chompin' Indominus Rex. It's a smaller looking figure with a huge head and huge eyes, and it comes with a few features. There's a button at the top of its head to activate some sound effects, and when it's dark, you can see its eyes glow, and you can use the tail to open the jaw, and when you press on the tongue, it'll close it. Over here, we've got the Camp Cretaceous Cryolophosaurus. This Cryolophosaurus has the dark blue coloring with the white and red detailing along its body. I do have a yellow Cryolophosaurus as well, but I think this was the only one from the Camp Cretaceous toy line. And as you can hear, it's got some sound effects and you can use the tail to control the head. Next up is the Jurassic World Dominion Ragosaurus. This figure has brown coloring. We saw the one earlier that had the dark blue coloring. It's got the same spine and the horn. But yeah, this one is a light brown color with some dark blue detailing along the top of its back and its neck. And of course, it still has the same action for when you press down on its body, it chomps. Next up, we've got the Jurassic World Dominion Sound Surge Giganotosaurus. This is a smaller Giganotosaurus figure, but it still has the iconic spine and the same coloring as many of the other figures. You can open and close the mouth manually, and the most important part is that it's got some sound effects built in. Next, we've got the Camp Cretaceous Ceratosaurus. This dinosaur figure has the iconic white horn at the top of its nose. It's got the red detailing and the brown detailing along its back and neck, and the rest of its body is a light gray color. And it's got one action button on its back to activate the jaw. This Jurassic World Dominion figure is the Ankylosaurus. It's got the clay red body with the brown top and lighter spikes. And it's got an action that when you press down on its body, it swings the tail back and forth with sound effects. Next up, we've got a figure that I bought pretty recently. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Mega Raptor. It's got some pretty cool coloring. The entire back of its body is a bright red color, and the front is this darker gray blue color. It's got some white detailing along its nose. And just like the Ragosaurus figures, this has an action that when you press down on its body, it chomps. I believe this one is the Jurassic World Dominion Iguanodon. It's got a light tan body with some detailing along the top, and when you press down on this body, it moves its head up and down. Right over here, we've got some smaller Camp Cretaceous figures. First, we've got this bright red and green Velociraptor with spring-loaded legs, so you can actually launch them into the air. We've also got two different colored Stiggy Malocs. This first one is dark brown with some purple detailing along the top. This one is a lighter blue color, and it's got some purple detailing around its face and its neck. And of course, both of them have the head ramming action when you press down on their tail. And of course, we've got another Camp Cretaceous Velociraptor blue figure. I've got a couple Jurassic World Dominion figures with extreme battle damage. This first one is the Dimetrodon with the battle damage on its side that you can turn on and off by pressing this button. And there's also this yellow and dark blue Velociraptor with the battle damage that you can turn on and off with this button up top. We've got some more smaller figures in here. This first one is the Camp Cretaceous Monolophosaurus. It has a dark green body. It's got some yellow detailing along the top and some red right at the top of its head. This next Camp Cretaceous figure is the Proceratosaurus figure. It has a dark blue body with some orange and brown detailing along the top of its head. And this figure is from Jurassic World Dominion. This is the Moros Intrepidus. It has a soft green body and orange from the tail down this line on its side, as well as around its eyes too. And here are our final three figures in this bin, all from Jurassic World Dominion. First, we've got a tan Atrociraptor in the crawling pose. This is the Miragaya figure with the huge spikes on its shoulders. And inside this container, what could it be? All right, it is another Atrociraptor figure. This is the white and brown Atrociraptor. And despite how small this figure is, it is pretty adjustable. And you can even twist the neck around too.
Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.